welcome to this introduction video to the Spooks software. Spooks is a program using Brian Kenson's soil pressure theory to design sheet power walls. Both free and anchored sheet power walls can be taken into account in the program. And the program is able to account for anchors in one level. Sheet power walls are widely used in Denmark, especially for excavations, for example, for parking basements. It should be emphasized that Spooks is not an expert system, but rather a tool for experts. That means that you need to have knowledge about the soil pressure theory and Brink Hansen's soil pressure theory in particular to be able to use the software. In other words, if you put garbage in, you'll get garbage out. The software is called Windspooks and has the icon which is shown here. Double click to start the software. It is assumed that the viewer has knowledge about Brink Hansen's soil pressure theory. This theory will not be explained here. The software has a rather simple user surface. When opening the program, a new project is already started. However, it is also possible to load an old project file, for example, to change input parameters for an existing construction. To design a sheet pile wall, all the points in the Parameters tab must be filled in correctly. First, the user needs to specify the project data. And afterwards, the calculation methods need to be chosen. The user can choose between free, free and anchored walls and between various movements in failure. When choosing the free option, it should be imagined as if the angle is not a part of the construction. The failure mechanisms covered normally by textbooks about Brink Hansen's soil pressure theory are the free sheet pile wall and the anchored sheet pile wall with 0, 1 and 2 plastic hinges respectively. The free sheet pile wall is failure mechanism C. The anchor sheet power wall without plastic hinges is failure mechanism A. The anchor sheet power wall with one plastic hinge is failure mechanism B. And the anchor sheet power wall with two plastic hinges is failure mechanism D. Note that for the latter failure mechanism, it is necessary to enter a value for I, B. According to the manual, this value can be set equal to 1 in cases where the sheet pile wall has sufficient driving depth and where the wall has the same section modulus in the entire depth. A new failure mechanism is introduced in the updated version of Spooks, namely the latter failure mechanism with two anchors. This failure mechanism calculates the soil pressures and the driving depth by use of the failure mechanism without plastic hinge. Hereafter, the soil pressure are redistributed to a linear form and the values for ET and EF are calculated. The user should hereafter calculate the anchor force, points with no transversal forces and the maximum moments by hand. After the failure mechanism is chosen, it is necessary to give some input about the geometry of the wall. All geometry is based on a leveling system chosen by the user itself. However, it is normally easier to use the general leveling system to give the geometry input. In the parameters wall tab, the user should state the upper level of the wall. In the Parameters Stratification tab, the user must give input about the substrata on the location of the sheet pile wall. The upper table concerns the back side of the sheet pile wall, while the lower table concerns the front side of the wall. The first column describes the upper level of the layer. 
first layer will normally have the same top level as the top level of the wall. The next two columns describe the dry and the saturated unit weight of the soil respectively. The dry unit weight is automatically used above the groundwater table while the saturated unit weight is applied below the groundwater table. The fourth and the fifth column is the strength parameters, cohesion and angle of shearing resistance respectively. The sixth column is the gradient in case of a water flow around the sheep pile wall. Note here that the sign convention is that a downwards flow is positive. The seventh column is the roughness of the wall. The roughness can vary between zero and one. Zero means a totally smooth wall while one means a totally rough wall. In the last column, it is possible to give a description of the layer. This description will appear on the graphic results after the calculation. The program can handle up to seven different soil layers on each side of the wall. The ground surface can further be inclined by the parameters in these two boxes here. On the front side, the first set value should correspond to the excavation level. In the parameters, water levels, unit weight, tap. The water level should be stated on both the front and the back side. Again, this is done by the chosen leveling system. In the upper cell, the water level on the back side, B for back, should be entered, while the water level on the front side should be entered in the lower cell, F for front. Further, the unit weight of water should be specified here. In geotechnical engineering, it is normally sufficient to calculate with a unit weight of 10 kN per cubic meter. Hereafter, the loads on the front and the back side must be entered in the parameters loads tab. Again, B makes reference to the back side and F makes reference to the front side. The level set R refers to the level where the load on the back side affects the wall. If the load is a uniformly distributed load on the entire ground surface, this level should be the same as the level of the ground surface. However, if the load is a point load acting in a certain distance from the wall, the level should refer to the level where the load affects the wall. In the parameters partial coefficient tab, the user should enter values for the partial coefficients. Note here that the default values are all set equal to 1 and therefore do not correspond to what is stated in the euro code. Further, note that the partial coefficient can be changed from front to back side of the wall. In the parameters anchor tab, the placement of the anchor should be entered according to the chosen leveling system. In the cases described in the textbook, it is not needed to enter a value for the anchor force. This option is only used for the failure mechanisms with yielding anchor. The next two tabs, we will not enter anything, we'll go to the additional pressure tab where it is possible to give input about extra pressures. The input is a level set and where the pressure starts and the unit value of the pressure E set. After all the input has been entered, it is time to calculate the project. This is done in the calculation menu. Press calculation and then calculate. The program 
will now calculate the sheet pile wall and the dust window will open. Let the program calculate and then close the dust window to proceed to the results. The calculation is done by an iterative procedure and the program will not use the correction formulas. The program keeps guessing of the height or the placement of the yield hing until moment illicrum is obtained. The result can be examined in both a graphic and a textile. This will be shown further in the examples.